Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the first user webinar at a new time in the new year. We're going to give this morning time a shot and see how it works for all of you. Always feel free to share your thoughts with us on the best times that we can grab busy CE folks to share an hour with us. Aceware's escrow feature got a lot of work in 2020, and today we're here to talk best practices in using escrow. Lindsay's going to lead us through the back office side of things, and Jason will talk about using escrow on Ace Web. We have Chuck and Matthew here with us as well, and so you may hear from them from time to time too. And remember, when you have questions or comments or ideas, type those in the chat box, and we are monitoring that and can answer your questions or give a shout out to Lindsay and Jason for their input. So with that, Lindsay, I'm going to turn things over to you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Bright and early, bright and early on a Thursday, the week is, is almost over. So escrow best practices, we have all kinds of, of fun things to toss at you today. So don't worry if it seems like too much because it will be up in our webinar archive later. So what are we going to talk about? Talk a little bit about what escrow is. Uh, we are going to address refunding and transferring to escrow and the difference between the two. We'll talk about firm escrow. You might not know that that's available, and it is an awesome feature to have. Talk about the course itself, some of the reporting you can do, how to actually use the money once we get it there, uh, and uh, a newer feature is you can actually es uh, refund from escrow. And then Jason will take it over and talk about how to use it online. So. Jumping right in, what is escrow? Escrow is refunded money. We hold it in a course in student manager that is titled escrow. The money in escrow, you can apply to registrations in student manager as well as ACE Web. And there is that firm escrow. So if uh, you know, you, you're, you're dealing with contract courses or you know folks, multiple employees in the same firm, you can actually hold the money now in a pot for everyone and you know just apply it as as folks in the firm uh, come in and owe you money you can print or email notices to students so you know sending confirmation sending reminders and there are notices in ace web when you log on and another great thing about escrow is that you know rather than have Money sitting in there for five, ten years, and somebody calls and says, "You know, I think I took something in, uh, you know, 2002, and I have credit." You can clear that out so that it's it's not there once it expires; it is gone. And finally, you do have some options with how to let folks use it in Ace Web. So, how do we refund money to escrow? How do we do it? Same way we we you know refund another payment. So we would go to the student's registration record, right? The green screen. Once you click on the payments button over at the top right, you do get a payment screen here. That refund wizard button down near the bottom left, once you click on that button, you're gonna get this screen. Most of you have probably seen this already. Uh, one of those options is to refund to escrow. So you could refund to the payer or you could refund it to escrow. So when we do this, you select that option, and then you can select the uh, the refund amount. Uh, you could do a total paid, you could do just a current payment, uh, that total paid minus a fixed amount. Say your uh, your department, your, your program's policy is, yeah, we'll refund you money, but we're gonna hold back, you know, a certain amount. Uh, you could do that total paid minus a fixed amount. Uh, you could also do a percentage. And then you have some other options down at the bottom. Uh, you do have the ability to cancel the registration. Uh, you know, you, you do need to put in a refund description. Uh, if you're doing attendance or CEUs, you also have the option to handle that part on this screen as well. And once you're ready, you just hit go. Process. What happens next? Once you hit that process button, If you don't have an escrow course in the system already, so if you aren't using escrow, it's actually just going to uh, 
create the course for you. It's going to be there. And the person, once you refund to escrow, they're going to be registered in that course, right? Because you, you can't have money anywhere unless you have a, a registration record. We have to have some way to, to follow that money and to tie it together. So they actually have a registration. And the payment is moved over to that registration. Great thing here, things that are very important. Anything from that original payment record is going to be saved. So receipt numbers, nothing's going to change there. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, accounting or anything like that. It's still going to be in the same place. And the ad date will be there for you. So, you know, in this example, it's June of 21. So that's, that's always going to be there so you know when it happened. And the other part is there will be a pay note that says it was transferred from the course, right, over, well, on the escrow, on the payment <laughs> record in escrow, it's going to say what it came from. So, you know, you know where the money's coming from. How did it get here? I don't know. Let's check the pay note. Do we have any questions so far? No? All right. Let's see, moving forward. Okay, so... There's this other other thing that you can do. Um, you, you have the refund wizard, okay? So, in addition to the refund wizard, you have this option of transferring a payment to escrow, right? So, just under that refund wizard button, there is a transfer payment escrow button. What does that do? Uh, let's say um, you, you don't necessarily want to issue a refund, right? Or maybe you want to take the money over to someone else, okay? What I'm going to show you is also a great option uh, if there were, if you were trying to institute some sort of gift card uh, feature, right? So you want to give people money, but you want it to be held somewhere so that they can use it when they're ready. So what's really important when using this transfer payment escrow button, it's, you know, up there in blue at the top. It's not going to cancel the registration. It's not going to adjust the fee. So if someone is paid, you know, in this example, $230, and you're transferring money away from it, that, that amount of $230 is still going to be seen as due, okay? And now you're not going to have the $230 paid necessarily, and so you're going to have a balance. We'll get to that. So to transfer it, same idea. You know, click the transfer payment button. Then you're going to have some options over here like transferring the entire payment to escrow. So if you wanted to move it all out, you could also do the uh, partial payment. You could transfer payment to another registration. Say someone else has uh, an escrow record already. You could move money over there. Okay. So when we're doing that, like I said, you do select your options. Or you could, again, just like with the refund wizard, you could set a certain amount. So, like I said, there, this, so you have your refund wizard for escrow, right? Let's say somebody's canceling the class and instead of refunding them all the money to, you know, to a card or, or back on their check or something, you can use that. The, the great thing about using the refund wizard is that it's going to set a fee adjustment. You're going to have the option to, you know, cancel the registration. When you're using this transfer option, you, you don't have those choices. So, so this might be used in a situation where maybe somebody sent in a check and they sent it for too much money, right? It's a $100 course and they sent in a check for, you know, 200 That's great. You get to keep money in and, you know, the balance sheets look great. You could send that partial payment over. You could do a partial payment of that overpayment, $100 rather than a refund. So the money's just sitting somewhere. Uh, this is something that you, you may want to decide as a department what's going to work best for you, but know that you have both of those options. So let's see what comes next. Once you click it, it is moved over to the registration. So firm escrow, this is a really great feature. With it, payments made by the firm are available to others, right? So, uh, you know, Chuck, Matthew, Jason, Sharon, and I, we are all at Aceware. And let's say I had a course, but now there's money in escrow for me and, and Jason's coming in. 
and he's going to use the money. There are a few things that you need to do. One of the very important things here is on the payment record, the payer must be the firm. Okay, so typically with your people, you already have on their name record the firm that they're associated with. When you are making payments, you can select paid by firm. And the next thing is in your preferences on the pay tab, there is a checkbox that says use firm escrow. This is a blue option. It is in blue, so that means it is going to affect all users. This is a global preference that you would be setting. So the next thing is the escrow course itself, okay? We know that we have the ability to look up active courses, right? Our button on the quick launch screen, and we do also have the ability with those yellow binoculars or Alt-J or module courses, find course, everything. I, I, I love with this that there are, there are multiple ways. So once you find the way that's best for you, you know, stick with it. You do have to look it up. It is inactive. We want to keep it that way. Escrow course makes pretty, pretty good sense with the code escrow, right? The other great thing, again, is you can run reports. Uh, what you see here is if you were sending out, let's say you wanted to email all of the folks in escrow, uh, you could use our Merge Mail Wizard. We, we do have a template. If you do not have this escrow template in your module, catalog, email templates area, get with your tech, and we will get that in there for you. And of course, you can modify it once it's in the system. So. How do we add money to the registration? First, we pull up that registration record, and we would go to payments. Once you click on payments, you're gonna get this great little message that says this student right, has escrow pay records on file, so you know that they have money on file that they can use. You say okay, you get in here. If the person, so, so this is important, if the person has escrow and doesn't owe a balance somewhere else, right? If they have credit in escrow, you're going to have this escrow pay button and it's going to be active, okay? All you have to do is click it. You will also notice here that firm escrow is available. So again, if you're paying from, you know, a firm escrow, you would, you would click that button instead. Once you click it, it's just there. It has been added to the registration. You will notice, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, that things like the, uh, the receipt number again, right? It's still there. The payment date, that's all the same. If, uh, if everything in escrow is going to be equal to, you know, what was there, then all the money is moved. Uh, if there's more in escrow, then the remainder stays there. So we don't have to worry about, well, they had money in escrow and now I put it here, but some of that shouldn't be there, so it has to go back. It's, the, the system is going to handle that for you. And if there's less, right, then you're going to have to add another payment. So again, we would click on that add payment button and go from there. Like I said, all the details are going to be there for you. Now, this is important. You can't apply the credit to grouped registrations. So if you have a group, you're going to have to ungroup and take care of it that way. So each individual registration, you would apply the money. So here's another great thing. You can refund money that's in escrow. Uh, 2020 felt like it was, what, about 50 years? It, uh, <laughs> it changed how I think we all do things. and you know, if you had to cancel a lot of classes, but folks were willing to, you know, if you kept all that money in escrow, if they wanted to go ahead and get a refund later, you can do this. It works the same way with the refund wizard. You're going to get the same screen. Now, the difference, of course, is there aren't going to be as many options available. It's just going from refund wizard from escrow. It's going to go to the payer. It's going to be the current payment that you are sitting on. You can't, you know, cancel. That's going to be checked by default. And you do still need to put in the, uh, the refund description. 
and then you just hit your process button. Another great thing, like I mentioned earlier, say you have old credits from 10, 15 years ago, or even last year, maybe you set yours, it's here, it's good for a year, and, and then you're done. You can clear out all of those old credits uh, using the Zap Charge. This is actually just one thing that Zap Charge is available for, but it's a, a great one. Uh, so what you would do, it's under Tools and Financial in Student Manager. You would want to clear out balances or credits in this case, and you would need to put in your course code, okay? So in this case, again, course code begins with, you would put in the escrow course code, and then we're, we're probably clearing them based on payment date. Remember, that is the date of the payment, not necessarily the date that you put them in escrow, right? And you can add your own adjustment. You know, expired credit is a great one to use. And then in Zap Charge, in, in this situation, you have an option to clear the credit balances. And so what that does is it voids the payments. So again, you still have records there. They, they haven't gone anywhere. And you'll just click OK to continue. Note here, just like any time you run any major routine that might affect a lot of records, make sure you have a backup before you, you move forward, right? Just in case something, something goes crazy or you, you made a mistake on the dates, you can restore from that backup. And you will see the payment gets voided. And the record still exists, right? And you get that fee description, reason for void, expired credit. All right, so from here, uh, let's talk about a couple of case studies. I know there were some questions. Are there, are there things that came up while I was showing you this so I can write those down and, and we make sure we get to those as well? Sharon, you got anything for me? We, we don't have questions here right now. While they're thinking, okay. I'm going to ask a question here. When All everybody right. signed up, we asked if they were using escrow feature, and many, many, many were. Question, if, show of hands, everybody get ready here. Show of hands if you are also using firm escrow. Raise your hands if you are using firm escrow. Yeah, and you you obviously would have needed to turn on the preference under under pay. So, all right. We have a couple here, a couple here that have. And maybe they will be thinking of things along the way, Lindsay, as I turn things over to Jason. So, folks, if you think of things as Jason's speaking and you have questions for still for Lindsay or Jason, pop those in the chat box. But we'll turn things over to Jason to kind of go over ACE web side of things. Jason, you should have the controls. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about using escrow on AceWeb. So what do you need to do to, to get this up and running? So first things first, you need to be on AceWeb build 60 or later. There is a new preference, or I'm sorry, a new INI setting in your AceWeb INI called escrow payments. Got three options that toggle two different ways that you can use escrow on AceWeb. So obviously zero leaves it as disabled, which means it's it's not available for use on AceWeb. Option one means that you can use escrow monies if the amount in your escrow will completely cover everything that you've added to the cart. So if the, the escrow amount is greater than everything on your cart total, then it allows you to apply that escrow credit. Option two allows you to use escrow even if the amount in your escrow account does not cover everything on the on the card. And what it will do is prompt you to pay the remaining balance by credit card. Okay, there is also another INI setting called escrow cutoff. What this does is it allows a global limit to the amount of or the number of days that people can use money in their escrow account on AceWeb. So again, this is a global setting and it applies to any of the escrow courses that you have. A um, Couple of notes here because I know we had some questions that came up on this. Um, the first thing I wanna say is the way that AceWeb looks at escrow courses because a number of you have 
um, sort of archived your escrow courses where you would make like an escrow one and an escrow two. ACEWEB looks for a course number that begins with star star escrow. Anything after that doesn't matter. ACEWEB's still going to look in it. So if you have star star escrow one star star, ACEWEB will still look in that course for escrow for escrow registrations for your for your student records. So if you do want to archive those and make them, you know, you're not willing to zap them out as Lindsay showed earlier and just kind of delete them. You want to keep a historical record. Just make sure that you you name that archived escrow course star star x escrow or something like that so that aceweb doesn't view that as eligible monies to to use um, again the the expiration is is global there isn't a way to set this on um, individual registrations or or people uh, unfortunately there's that level of granularity is just not available um, one thing that uh, wasn't mentioned on the student manager side is there is a checkbox uh, that allows you to disable the use of escrow on a course-by-course -course basis. So if there are certain courses that you do not want people to apply their escrow money on ACEWEB to, uh, just make sure you check that box. It's on the ACEWEB Info tab of the course screen. Okay. So if you are updating and you're doing the incremental zips, let's say you were on build 59 and you went to build 60 and you... Uh, put in all of the the new and updated files in place, then you already have copies of custom register and reg fail. Uh, again, if you're not doing incremental updates, so if you went from 59 to, and you're going to go to 61 or 62 coming up um, later this month, then you need to make sure you're using the full zip. That way you get these updated copies. Um, if you are going to do sort of a piecemeal update, then just make sure you get with your tech to get those copies of uh, custom register and reg fail. Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit more in a couple more slides, but uh, you'll probably want to edit the credit balance messages based on the option that you're choosing on how to use escrow, whether it's the completely covering the cost of the card or partial amounts. By default, uh, it's going to it's going to have a message that says you have money in your escrow account. Please call the office to to use that. So you want to make sure you edit that those necessary templates as well as the registration confirmation email. If you do want to allow escrow use online, you want to make sure that the registration confirmation will correctly reflect that they used escrow money to pay for either this course completely or partial amount, so on and so forth. Okay, so the the sample sample escrow messages, so this would be an example of um, a message that is used on a number of templates. So those are X welcomes. So when you first log into your account, um, typically you land on the X welcome page. This is one of the areas that that show escrow function will show up. And again, by default, it's it's going to say, um, please call the office if you want to use your escrow. So if you are going to allow this, you want to make sure that you get these edited on each of these templates. Um, and I do want to show, let me see if I can do this here. So on our help page, let me go back a couple here. If you look up the, the show escrow function, it's going to give you a number of these examples that you can use. So when I'm talking about editing the X welcome template or the X enroll card, and you want to you know, fully customize that message based on whatever your option is. Cheryl has done an awesome job and updated our, our help documentation that gives you a number of examples that you can just copy and paste uh, or copy and replace the existing show escrow function on your existing templates. So uh, show escrow in the online help will get you what you need there. Okay. So some notes about using escrow with proxy registrations. The person that is doing the registration, so the, the person that is enrolling someone else, can use their own money in escrow to pay for the registrations on their cart. However, they can't use the person's that they're enrolling. How do, you, how do you word this? They can't use the person that they're enrolling. They can't use their escrow money to pay for courses, despite it being their own course that they're enrolling in. So in those 
situations, what you would probably want to do is either have that person log in themselves to use that escrow money on AceWeb, or you can go in and transfer that money. Um, as Lindsay demonstrated earlier, um, transferring that entire escrow registration or payment to another person. And <clears throat> firm escrow being the cool thing that it is, unfortunately, at this time is not available for use in AceWeb. Okay, so a couple of examples. So if you've got it set to escrow payments one, then when they get to that checkout page, they're going to see uh, and the amount of their cart is less than or equal to the amount of escrow money that they have, they'll see a message uh, similar to what you see here. You've got X number of dollars in your escrow account. You may use it to pay for your current selections. And then there's a pay from escrow button. If you are set to escrow payments one and the money in their escrow is not enough to cover everything on their cart, then you'll see the message that says you've got money in your escrow account but it's not to enough to cover the current cart selections. Um, I also want to point out, we don't have an example here, but this is where you would also see a message if you're using that um, co-no escrow field. So on the ASUB info tab, the disabling use of escrow for this particular course. This is also where you'd see a message that says uh, you can't apply escrow because you have this course on your cart, which is not eligible. Um, so they'll just need to know that they can remove that one from their card and proceed with using escrow uh, or choose a different payment method. So for escrow payments two, um, this is where you can allow them to use a partial amount of escrow to pay for, uh, courses on their cart. And what it does is it first gives you the, the checkbox, which is basically just an option that says they can either use or not use that escrow. If they do, they're essentially agreeing that they're going to pay for the remaining balance, uh, which is calculated for you on the fly there with their credit card. Now, interesting situations kind of came up when we were planning and thinking about this, and that is, okay, so what happens if they agree to it and apply their escrow, but then they get there to the credit card payment gateway and the card is declined or it's canceled or they bail out or something like that? what happens is that escrow money is still transferred to that registration. So it's applied to that registration. However, the remaining amount is then set as a billing record so that the user can then, uh, you can either invoice them, send them a bill, or they can actually go in on their history page and go to the payment status button and then make that payment at a later time. So again, if you edit your registration, your email registration confirmation templates, then uh, you'll wanna make sure that you um, get that wording right based on which option that you have selected. Um, if you need assistance with this, just get with your tech. Um, I'm not sure that we've got documentation examples of the functions to use on the registration confirmation template, but like I said, get with your tech and we can always get you assisted in, in doing that. So with that being said, what questions do we have? Okay, I have kind of a case scenario question for you all, and everybody else out there, get those questions in the chat box for us. We have a question here about um, whether escrow can or examples of how it might be used in a gift card situation for classes that can be applied for, for registrants. So, Lindsay, can you adjust, address that? Have you ever seen any cases where ESCO's been used as kind of a generic gift card? Sure, sure. Um, so, I, I, I said earlier, and I'll, I'll go back to this one, it, you, can, you can use escrow for it, but anyone who would, be, would have escrow must have that registration record in escrow, right? So um, let's say I'm feeling generous and I would like to, you know, get a gift card for Jason to, to take a class. I would need to make sure that he, one option you could do is just enroll him in the class, right? So we wouldn't even need escrow. But the other option would be to just give him a, a, a payment in escrow, right? Give him, give him a record. And I'm going to say anyone stop me if I'm going down the, uh, the, the wrong path here. Uh, but you would you would basically take a payment 
right? I don't know, Sharon, if you've made me the presenter again or not. That's okay if you, you did and I can talk to I will. It. I'm on the way here. Okay. Let me make sure I am doing the right things here. All right. Show my screen. There we go. Okay. Let me make sure I am doing this correctly. I'm just going to check it real fast for you. So if we had, come on, we did a credit card. So you you would need to enroll a person. Maybe you get really lucky and they already have an, an escrow record, right? Maybe they don't. So like I mentioned before, the course does exist. It is not active. If I were to click on the only active button, we're not going to see it. So we do need to go up to uh, binoculars or module, you know, courses, lookup course. You've got a few options there. And then it's right there at the top. So we would go to escrow. All right, Jason, I'm going to you know, get, give you a, a gift card. So I've called in, this is what I want to do. Uh, I could look in advance, right, student list, just like any other course, you can view a list. He's already in here. So we could go straight to his record, right, add edit Reggie, go over here to find, and Jason, there you are. So Jason already has a credit. So what if we wanted to just add a new person, right? Same way, we would just click add, and let's see, we'll give Bill a credit. You are going to get a warning that the course isn't active. That's okay. Yes, we still want to add a registration, right? So here we are. Nothing is entered, right? There's no fee. You would just go to payment, okay? And then I'm the one who's paying, so we would want all of that information to be mine, right? I'm going to pay with a, uh, you know, pay with a visa. Your payment gateway button does exist. I probably need the web running before I can uh, can use it, right? So we would just go out and we would, in real life, get to a payment gateway. This is not real life, this is a demo. So, also the important thing, did anybody notice what I, uh, what I didn't do and what's really gonna, gonna throw us and, and make a well, mess? I did. I did. Yeah, tell me. You forgot to put in the payment amount. I sure did. That's really important, right? We definitely want to put in an amount. So I'm going to be really generous with $18, right? Uh, again, you're going to get really important warnings that make a lot of sense anywhere except in escrow. You're making a payment for more than what's due. Yes, of course I want to do it because I want him to have a credit, okay? Now, let's pretend like payment gateway word. And there we go. So now, you know, there's this, this credit, right? We, we put Bill in here. He's, he has a credit. So just like Jason was saying, if you, you go online and you have a credit on your account, right, you can apply it. So same sort of way you're enrolling someone, just in a, you have to add that specific payment amount. And then it's there if they call to enroll in a course or if they go online for uh, ace web so gift cards are doable one question that might come up of course is well you know i i want them to be able to get some kind of nice uh you know paper they can print out or something right so you do have options like that with printing a receipt you could create well one you could create an email you might want to send an email receipt to to the payer i might want that but you know we have some options with additional reports you can modify one i don't think i have anything you know, credit voucher, there's something in here. So you might want to take a look, but you know, you could design that receipt, right? Cause it's, it's technically a receipt. It's in the print receipt area. You could design that however you like so that it would, it would show a, a credit for the person. So you have something, something tangible as well. That was a quick, you know, once over of it. I don't know if any questions came up in the meantime or anything uh, anyone wants to add. We we have a follow up question and um, uh, Jessica asks. He says, "Well, uh, our school isn't allowed to take credit cards on the phone through like student managers. So how would there be a way that um, a a person could buy uh, an escrow or to mm -hmm. put money in to somebody else's escrow?" on the web and so i'm going to toss that matthew jason uh or Lindsay. you sure, got that. in a kind of creative yeah. idea of how you might do that i've got an idea so, but i don't know if uh one of y'all want to take it first and you might have the same idea as i do 
Okay, yeah. Um, what mm -hmm. I was thinking is that you could have a gift card course that you could mm -hmm. manually enroll someone in and create a billing record for the amount of the gift card and then instruct them to log in online, go into their history, and pay for that invoice online. Mm, okay, now that's the other saying. the other thing. Um, so depending on their situation with using credit cards, um, like th I don't know if it's just through Student Manager or or what, but uh, there is the ability to use Manager Web to um, take payments for people. But again, that, I guess that's still kind of over the phone if you're transferring credit card information that way. So it might not apply. Matthew, um, did you? Uh, Lindsay, why don't you shoot your idea on that? Um, yeah. Or you're, you're playing um, with it right now. I am a little bit. So it's the same idea as a gift card course, right? Um, well, no, we wouldn't be able to. We wouldn't be able to do it like this. But I was going to say you could set it up as an online course, right? Since there wouldn't really be dates. Um, you might though, we, we have a, a pretty good option here as well. So again, like Jason said, you could enroll the person, you know, set a bill, make them go in and pay themselves. Uh, you could have a course online, right? That I could just go in and select and, and put money in. So a couple ways to do this, right? This is where we get into individual conversations. How do you envision this working for your own program versus, you know, what we might offer as a generic idea? If you set it as a donation course, you have options like, you know, setting a certain amount of, you know, fee, right? You could say, uh, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I'm just putting in some kind of fee amount, right? So you would maybe say, all right, um, whatever. You might say you could purchase a $50 one, right? You might say you could purchase one. So these are all going to be set, set rates. But of course, you do also with donation courses have this option of setting that fee donation amount, right? And so it's empty. So it would be a free entry, right? You, you could do it that way and put in whatever amount you want for the person. Now, uh, I'm, I'm getting down a rabbit hole, but you got Chuck. No, you're, you're doing good. And I think the idea there. Now, the other thing uh, that kind of following up with this, the point is that you uh, a, a, a school could create a course to put online that would be labeled gift cards or uh, or or I don't know. Again, the word gift card, it's a little bit more automatic than perhaps the way the system works. But a unique course that allows a person to go in, buy a dollar amount and then the thing you'd need to do would be have a data capture page for that student to be able to say, uh, you know, who do I want to gift this uh, gift this money to? And you're going to put in Lindsay Lieberman or Chuck Havlicek so that, uh, again, and, and the downside is staff would have to then apply that uh, escrow credit to the target student. So, again, it yeah. is uh, unfortunately not automatic. So, um, yeah. Um, questions, comments on uh, gift cards or anybody out there uh, doing some unique things on that? Love to get some feedback. And we're not seeing much. Um, we had a question uh, from Kimberly, Lindsay, and I think this is good to mm -hmm. kind of review. Uh, she says, how would an escrow payment show on Cashbox? Um, mm. if you apply an escrow that would have been entered several days ago into a, a new registration? That's a great question. Well, let me, and, uh, uh, well let, me, let, me, let me answer it for you here. And I guess okay. what I was going to say is the point about escrow money is that the original details of that payment do not change no matter how many times it's moved around from escrow to escrow. Because the date of the payment, the type of the payment, the person paying it, the dollar amount of that does not change. So that, again, um, your current cash box report, if you applied escrow from last um, December to a class uh, today, tomorrow, 
that money isn't going to show up on a new cash box account because it was accounted for back when you ran it back in December. So again, uh, that's my take on it. And again, Jason or Matthew and Lindsay, unless you want to take issue with that, I, I think that shouldn't really affect your, your escrow account reporting. I see here that Jessica kind of has a suggestion and a question. Uh, she says, if grandma creates the profile using the child's name, they could use the escrow in AceWeb by logging into the child's record? Mm. Question mark. Mm. That's a, in Jason. theory. Yeah, uh, I guess I missed the, what's the, the question in that? So if they're registered, like doing a proxy registration? Or logging in as the grandchild. What was the, what was the question? Uh, she she didn't really have a question. She was just following up to some of our ideas that they can't ah, okay. use okay. a credit card. Yeah. You know, she was she brought up not being able to take credit cards over the phone. So she was brainstorming ways to do that via AceWeb. Let's see. We have a question from Amy who joined a little late, but she said, "Will the student be?" removed from the escrow record when they are refunding. So when they look yes. at their records, they have, you know, tons of students that have a class, but they each have money. So the, your, the answer is yes. I heard you back there, Amy. Yeah. It does get canceled. Yeah, wait a minute. Okay. The registration gets canceled, but I think her question is, does the edu does the registration in escrow get removed? And I'm not sure. That's a Matthew question. I'm no. I'm not no. So there would be a registration in escrow, but it would have zero fees, zero payments. Right. Okay. So there's the answer. So I guess a staff could clear out zero p fee or zero balance escrow records in escrow if they wanted although kind of there's no harm no foul in kind of having them around if that person's an active student they might be using uh uh using money around or they might be having other people um so she follows up and says so when we have 830 students how many will have real money with us is uh, there a way to mass uh, delete or update those records well, but to, to to view those, if you go to the course, uh, if you go to the escrow course, Lindsay, and do show students, yeah. that should show you, Amy. So if you, when you're on a course, you go to student list, and uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you'll see the total amount paid in the paid column, and you can eyeball that list from right here. So again, yeah, just like a normal... Them. Yeah, normal course, you can view the status of payments from this uh, edit student roster, the view student roster. And she follows up. You, Amy's quick here. You can sort so it, is too. There, is there a way to mass delete the registrations in, uh, say, an escrow course that have zero fees? Not and yet. Not yet. Jay, uh, Matthew that's, says not yet. What about That's a the good wish list item? So we'll we'll put that on the wish list. All right. So we've got a note. We will add that to the wish list. Okay. Let's see. Jessica's back. Yeah. Um, Jessica is kind of if the uh, the uh, example that she mentioned earlier about if a grandma wanted to register a grandchild or a husband register a spouse um, or a spouse register a spouse and then they create an account for that other person uh, that parent uh, adult could go into that child's account or that guest's account. Create a pro to create a profile and make a payment because they would have the person's mm -hmm. um, password to get into that. And then if the person itself, him him or herself, were logging in, they could go in and use the escrow. Uh, that would be that would be cre that would be correct. Um, I, I guess the example of a of a grandchild gets kind of begs the question of whether or not 
the grandchild is going to be logging on and do. Of course, again, why am I why am I questioning eleven year olds? They probably are better at this than, than we are. So yeah, some creative ways to do that. That's an ongoing for everybody's benefit. This challenge of how to automate gift cards is on our uh, brainstorming list. We're, we haven't figured out a, a, a perfect solution yet. Uh, but uh, we are continuing to think about ideas. And again, if you've got other suggestions on how that might work or uh, automate that, we'd sure welcome them. So, Sharon, any other questions you see? Uh, again, Jason, uh, Matthew, Lindsay, any other thoughts or notes that you might want to <clears throat> add into that? Um, one, one quick note. Uh, Let's say somebody has multiple payment records in escrow and you need to get all of that money back to them. Uh, I think there was a question about that. In in those situations, because you're refunding, you're using the refund wizard and you're on an individual payment record, I believe, Matthew, Chuck, tell me if I'm wrong, you are going to have to hit that refund wizard on each payment record because, again, you don't have as many options with refunds from escrow as you would you know a, a course that may be a registration where someone paid three times and you can refund the total amount paid is that are we are we calling that one correct so in other words we've got three payments here right and maybe we need to refund you know the 50 and the 15 and the 10 with that refund wizard you can't select many things, so you are going to have to refund each record. So you would have to refund the ten dollars. Once you do that, you would refund, you know, the the fifteen and then the fifty. As of right now, there is no way to do it all at once. Okay, let me let me chime in. And again, I'm not sure, yeah. Kimberly. You may you may want to explain in the text box here, but <clears throat> uh, I wasn't sure if that was related to actually refunding out of escrow. Uh, but but uh, Lindsay liked the idea that I have a fifteen dollar escrow, a ten dollar escrow, and a twenty dollar escrow, and mm -hmm. I want to register for a seventy dollar class and apply oh. escrow. That's mm -hmm. as I understand automatic. Uh, the yeah. escrow. When you say it takes, when you go to a person's record and it, you look at the amount of escrow available, the total amount of all of their escrow records, whether it's one big payment or multiple small amounts, all of those would be transferred over to the class that they want to apply that money to. So again, um, from student manager or AceWeb, um, if they're applying small amounts of escrow to a larger amount due, it's automatic. Uh, there, there's no handling involved in needing to do that. So for general info and Kimberly, I don't know if that helped uh, explain um, maybe your situation you were thinking about. So, well, uh, uh, good questions here. Again, if you've got some unique cases on escrow that you'd like to cover and, and uh, you're pondering those, do uh, send an email to us. And uh, again, Sharon or I, and we'll get it to the tech <clears throat> or to, uh, see if we can't um, uh, address that in questions. So, Sharon, um, again, others, uh, Jason, AceWeb, Angles, thoughts in there? Before we let we Sharon covered everything. wrap it up. Well, those were, that was good. good discussion. We like getting some good discussion in there like that. And, Lindsay, if you can pull up maybe the final slide there because I think you are showing now we yeah. can give folks the uh, a glimpse at our February mm -hmm. webinar we will be talking about a pre-publication checklist you know how don't open your registration with that one so we will have tips and tricks and things that you should go through before you set things out for registration so get that marked on your calendar we'll try 10 o'clock again and with that not seeing any other discussion we will wish you all a good afternoon and have a good weekend ahead of you and sure. oh there's a sure. question well, here I, uh, well i was going to say okay. while we're while we're preparing for the pre-pub checklist um, I know we are inviting, and if you've got uh, within your organization the start of a pre-pub checklist that you use, 
we love to see that because we're looking for examples from people who already have one. So do send that in to Sharon. Uh, if you've got one that you wouldn't mind sharing the process that you use to make sure we're not forgetting anything as we uh, just uh, prep for that next week. Okay. And we do have a final question here, Jessica, from Jessica Dis Jason. So if a registration, this is on escrow again, if a registration can be paid for using escrow and a credit card if the escrow amount isn't enough to cover the entire amount. There's a setting for that. Yes, Jason? Right. So if you have the escrow escrow payments set to two, then you can use a partial escrow amount to cover the cost of a registration or registrations on your cart, and then the rest is, is prompted to be paid by credit card. She's got it. Thanks so much, everybody, for your questions, and we will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. <clears throat>